This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Blakely versus Brown. You all have been together for three years, you're living together, and arguments over infidelity have you literally gone in and out of your house. Mr. Blakely, why have you opened your case today? Because I feel like my, my woman is cheating on me, and I just feel like it's, it's just too much lies and sneakiness going on on top of that. What is that doing to your relationship? Every day we arguing. Every day we arguing over petty things, but it's just simple. Basically, I just see stuff going on in her phones too much. If I can and this just fear add... of her cheating just keeps taking you out of the house. Yeah, it's just certain. Come it's... back, but then it drives you away again. Yes, sir. He he says that I'm through my phone and I'm doing things. Okay, All I day. do use the internet, Facebook, and everything, but he doesn't see me texting people back uh, or or anything sexual because to you anybody. Be sneaky about anybody. It. And but how you be am I too sneaky, sneaky about it? To get we. I could be just, we, we could just sit there and lay and watch TV side by side, you know? And you will lean I'm to in the my side phone. with your phone. So, Ms. Brown, you're saying you're not cheating with anybody? No, I'm not. No, I'm you're not. You're not doing anything? I'm not doing anything. You aren't driving him out of the house? No, he's driving yes. me out of my mind, actually. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Mr. Blakely, tell me why you think she's cheating. Well, there's one incident where me and her had got into it. So, at the time, I was like, well, if it's gonna be over, whatever, I'm gonna go get my clothes. I go over there. Knock on the door. About 15 minutes. I'm like, any other time that me and her break up or whatever, she be instantly ready for me to come get my clothes. She walk me all around the house. Get your clothes. Get your clothes. Look, but this day, she don't want me to get my clothes. I'm beating on the door. The dog running in and out, barking all. So I know she in the house. Only thing I hear is her say, uh, I don't know. Did you think she was in there talking to somebody? Clearly, it gotta be some, something going on. <laughs> and you think Hello? that somebody was another man? Yes. <laughs> That's because his yes. insecure delusion of mine. I'm not letting him in because we got into we got into a huge altercation to where I didn't want him to come back. No. Was there anybody in the house with no, you? No, nobody. Me Who and the dog. Who were you talking to? Actually, I was on the phone when he uh, came up. I was on the phone on a business call. Ms. Brown, when you say business call and you did this... That spoke loudly. It did. It spoke loudly, oh, more loudly than what yeah. came out that your mouth. Sense. But, Ms. Brown, you do you understand too. that... He's saying, in the past, you have always opened the door. That's he... not even true. I done left him out, out before. And he, that's what I'm saying. I, I done left him out before when we got into a major league. You ain't but it was, not let me it in the house. But it was so deep, I, and I told him, don't come back. I, I didn't want to see him after To get my clothes, if you didn't before. want me to come back, you gonna let me get my clothes and leave. Who did you believe she was in the house with? One of her Facebook friends, be honestly. <laughs> So-called friend, the same one uh, uh, when, uh, around Christmas, he just popped up and called out the blue, talking about this, he need okay, a ride. Let me tell you this, this story. This, this man this ain't story. called since okay, I've been wait. around, but all what of a sudden, he want to call. This okay, guy. so tell me what happened on Christmas. Christmas. So we just chilling, whatever. It's about to be the holiday, so it's just me and her. If I don't have my fo uh, a phone, I'm using her phone. So I'm like, your phone ring? Because I don't know the number. She like, you don't know who this is? I'm like, no. I look at it, and I'm like, it might be somebody I know. Hold on, let me see. Before I can reach for it, she hurry That's... up and grab it. You a She lie? hurry up and grab it. When she you grab lying. it, she answers the phone. I hear a dude say, what's up, or something like that. You lying. So, you lying. When, so when he say, what's up, she step back. Step back, get on the phone. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, turn the volume down. Now I can't hear nothing he's saying. She's standing right there. I'm sitting down. I'm looking dead at her like, really? So I'm just sitting there. She like, oh, well, I can't get out right now. All right, Ms. Brown, did that happen? What happened was... We what it happened there. was... What happened was we sitting in there in the kitchen. I'm cooking, yeah, because you don't... You see, he's sitting there watching me cook. You know what I'm saying? So... That's a my beautiful phone, thing. He's keeping yeah, you company. Beautiful. It would be nice if you can get some help every now and again while you want to run your mouth. So, I answered the phone, and I'm like, hello, whatever, and he's like, hey, I'm seeing if you can give me a ride somewhere. I paid some gas money to take me somewhere, and I'm like, well, no, I'm chilling or whatever. I'm Who not is even this person that can this call you up and This is a friend of mine, and then... He is this not day no friend he, if he say that, I friend, like you, and you know I like you, or something like that. This is a friend of mine that, that I've known... No okay, hold on, Mr. Blakely. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ms. Brown, hold on. Is this a man who's told you he likes you? Maybe at some point. No, no, no. Yeah. That's a yes or no. He, yeah, yeah, he maybe told me that before okay. at one point. And you, and you are I mean, involved. a lot of guys do. I mean, what, yeah. A lot of guys? Yeah. Okay, well, let's, let's well, back... Yes, yes, hold on. Honor, yes, he so, have. He have before at okay. one point. I've been right. for 13 now, years. Hold on, Mr. Keller, hold on. In a relationship that's gonna survive, 
You have to make sacrifices sometimes for that person's well-being. Right. And if he is saying to you, this bothers me, then there should not be any friendship that's more important than his heart health. Right. And it's not. It's not, though. It's but, not. I don't but, but what I'm he- guy. But what I'm he here... He called me out of the blue, out of month. I don't talk to him on a daily basis, a monthly basis, But when anything. you know what? But let me show you how that should have gone down. Bring me up. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how are you? Uh, yeah, can you, uh, can you give me a ride? Hold on. Honey. Yeah, this is, this is my friend. I just want to let you know. Hold on, let me handle this. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm with somebody and he's not comfortable with this. Oh, come on now. Don't be like that. I know, I know. I know you want me, but... You know I do. I know you do. And so, therefore, I'm saying to you, we can't... I don't want you to call me anymore. I wish you the best. Be strong. Yes. Uh, but don't call me anymore. Yes. So... Are there any other inappropriate contacts with men that you're concerned about yes, regarding Miss Brown? Uh, she have uh, this one so-called cousin that I'm just finding oh, that I'm just finding out that's not her real cousin. So this is a, this is a fake cousin, a yeah. play cousin. Yeah, you know those are the ones you gotta this look out the for. The play cousins cousin. will get you every time. Every time. Uh, tell but, me about your play cousin, Miss Brown. I told him. I met him around when I was 17 years old and we met as friends and whatnot. Sometime later, after hanging out with my peop- family and his family, we realized that he's his married into my family in some type of way. So, ever since then, we've always... I mean, we've always hung out. You know, he look out for me at times. I always look out for him and he... Look out a little too much. All right, so... Me, but look, the thing is, like, uh... Well, hold on, Miss Brown. So, Mr. Blake, what are you worried about about this fake cousin or this play cousin? Okay, late night, she'd be like, all of a sudden, she just gotta go somewhere. If I ask her, like, well, so where did you go? She'd get mad and be like, oh, I went to the store. But when I look at her phone, she'd have been hit him up. So you believe that instead of going to the store, she's going to be with the fake cousin? Yes, because he only stayed a, a, a second away, and she got a heavy foot. So she'd be there in three seconds. <laughs> Quick. But what proof do you have that she actually was with him? A lot of the times, we'll be broke or whatever. She... I gotta go somewhere and be gone, come back. She got all type of stuff. Where you get all this stuff from? You know what I'm saying? You all type of stuff like what? Like, I mean, as far as money, uh, gas money, uh... And you think this fake cousin is giving it to her? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. You know what I'm saying? Are you... T- what are you saying? Yeah. I'm saying the fake cousin is giving it to her. Giving what to her? Whatever he thinks she's getting. So, you not on... Are you talking about more than just I'm talking money? about what Mr. Blakely is saying. He's saying the fake cousin is giving her stuff. You know what? <laughs> do you have his number? Yes, I do. All right, you know what? I think we should call him. <laughs> the fake cousin? Yeah. He doesn't know we're calling. Yeah. And we can catch him off guard. I think we can break through and find out what is going on between Miss Brown and the fake cousin. Okay. Where do you have his number, Miss Brown? Uh, it's in my phone, in my purse. Okay, is your purse in security? Mm-hmm. Okay, Ron, would you please and bring it in? Yes, y'all. Thank you. Insecure. <laughs> Sometimes, Carla, when you catch folks off guard, the truth becomes known. You can't catch nobody yeah. off guard. Yes, we do it with the kids. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Thank you, Ron. She's All right. Well, she'd have been uh, hit him up. Hello. Yes. Is this Mr. Antoine Jones? Yes, ma'am. It is. All right, Mr. Jones. This is Judge Dana Cutler with Couples Court with the Cutlers, and we have a couple here: uh, Edward Blakely and Tiffany Brown. Are you familiar with them? Yes, ma'am. Do you know Miss Brown? Yes, I do. That's my cousin. How long have you known Miss Brown? So I thought she was my cousin. I believe when um, like she was seven, about seventeen. All right, and you say you all are cousins. Why do you say that? Her auntie married my uncle. So you all are not blood relatives, but you are married in relatives. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And have you ever given her money? Yeah. Do you expect something in return for that money? Yeah. No. So why are you just giving this woman money? 
That's not that's typical. What do. So you. That's what family do. We ain't got it for you. This is the gentleman, Mr. Black, and your concern that your intended is sleeping with. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. All right, so I've asked Mr. Blakely. He says he's concerned that you are uh, sexually active with Miss Brown. Gross. He is very concerned That's about nasty. that. <laughs> Thank you. Is that what I just said? How gross is that? Disgusting. Y'all ain't family. Disgusting. How, gross, how can that be gross because and y'all ain't family? Mess with when was the last time you and Miss Brown family. were sexually active? Never. You have never had sex with Miss Brown. Ew. Hey, snar. All right. <laughs> Mr. Jones, thank you so much for your testimony and thank you for taking our call. You have a good day. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Push it, man. You know, we do that with our kids. We try to catch them off guard and and get to the truth. I'm not sure I believe him, but his testimony Sound incredible, especially when he said, ooh, that's nasty. Like, that is the last yeah, that, thing. That's what I tell him. I said, first of all, I'm insulted that you would even think some fool foolery like that. But when you and then I'm like, but, stuff, okay, but you think this about him, but what exactly do you see this? You never seen me text him sexually or anything. And then he was even with me when I done went and paid him back money that he done let me borrow. No, I ain't. And stuff like that. No, so. I ain't. I ain't never so but Mr. Mr. Blakely, Blakely, pay somebody else back. You've heard the testimony, Mr. Believe? Jones. He said he has not slept with Miss Brown. Did you believe his testimony? I don't believe no man. You don't believe no human. Period. And so you still have your suspicion. I mean, sick. first of all, because he's not blood. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just can't. I mean, what? You can't get your mind around I can't the thought get around that. that a man who is not a blood relative right. is doing these things for your girlfriend and not expecting or getting something in return. Is that correct? Yes. All right. And good. if you find out she's cheating, then that's the last straw. I'm going by my business. Girl. You're done. Well, do. anyway, so. Here's what we're looking at. Because the way the evidence is mounting up, he thinks that you're involved with two men. And if that's true, Mr. Blakely said he is done. This court has done a full and complete investigation to determine, is she cheating? this time, the court would like to call former expert military interrogator Lena Sisko into the courtroom. Ron, would you please escort her in? Yes, Sean. <laughs> Lena Sisko. Step right over to the monitor, please. Good day, Ms. Sisko. How are you? I am great. How are you, Your Honor? We're good. Tell us what you did to investigate this case. Sure, Your Honor. First, I had the accused write a witness statement, which I then analyzed for any indicators of deception. I studied their case file, and I put together an interrogation plan, and then I interrogated Ms. Brown to see if she was cheating on Mr. Blakely. And based on that, what were your initial findings? So my initial findings, um, usually when I interview, I look for nonverbal and verbal indicators of both truthfulness and deception. Miss Brown was very talkative, and she expressed a lot of feelings and emotions during the interview, which are all indicators of truthfulness. However, when I did ask her, um, why should I believe her? She didn't give me the truthful response I had expected. Hmm. So further into your investigation, what did you learn? So Miss Brown owned up and admitted to having conversations with the guy on Facebook. She also admitted, uh, when I asked about her cousin, that she has known him for 17 years. And Mr. Blakely was, wasn't gonna ruin that relationship. And she also told me, when I asked her, why do you wanna come to court today? She said, because I wanna prove that I am not the monster that Mr. Blakely has made me out to be and that he needs to look deep inside himself to find the real issue. Oh. Wow. So based on all of that information, what was your conclusion as an expert in interrogation and knowing what people do and don't do? I believe that she is telling the truth today and she's not lying about cheating on Mr. Blakely. <laughs> Mr. Blakely, how does that make you feel? 
You got answers from Ms. Brown, and you got answers from our expert. Each of them saying that Ms. Brown was being truthful and is not cheating on you. That's got to make you feel good. Yeah. Tell her how it makes you feel. Actually, I feel a whole lot better. You know, it's, it's hard to explain, you know? <laughs> well, now you see how honest and loyal I was telling you I was, but I feel like it's too late now, honestly. <laughs> you know, I've cried, shed tears, and pleaded, and just really tried to get my all, and if that ain't good enough, then I don't know, so... Mr. Blakely, are you in it to win it? All the time. You all have been together for three years. You are recently married, newlyweds, with the goal of spending your golden years together. But those golden years may be tarnished depending on what happens here today. Am I right, Mr. Edie? Yo, yeah, you right, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Edie, yeah. you brought this case today. Tell me why. I believe my wife cheated. Oh. I think, yeah, I think she cheated. There's too many coincidences going on around that house. You know, I'm just tired of it. I ain't, I ain't crazy. So, oh, you, yes. so we hear about women's intuition. You got a male intuition going on. Something's going on. Something ain't right in Denmark. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miss Edie, why are you here? Well, I'm here to prove to him that I am not cheating. Okay. I'm very flattered that this 66-year-old woman still catches an eye. Okay, oh. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> but I love a you. Oh, but I'm still saying she cheated. I got to stand on it. I'm going to prove it today. So, Mr. Edie, you smiling, she's smiling. And I'm thinking y'all think about how it was in the beginning. Tell me about how y'all met. I met on a Super Bowl. It was like a Super Bowl Sunday. And I uh, talked to one of my family members. And family members say, <laughs> hey, I got somebody for you. So I talked to her on the phone, you know, and we was talking, laughing and all. Mm -hmm. Then we talked for like a whole month. Then she said, well, why don't you come down here to me? I you, said, have oh, you seen her at this point? No. Nah, yeah. I see the picture on the other. phone. But y'all had not physically <laughs> met. No, we didn't physically met, so. Man, that's, uh, a, that's a leap of faith right there. I'm right. <laughs> so I sold everything. I got in that car and I came to three states. Then I was talking to her on the phone. I said, look, I'm almost there. I'll be there about an hour. And she said, well, I got to go to work in the morning. I'll see you in the morning. I said, no, you see me tonight. Three states. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. when I got there, we sit down and talk. So things left on to things. So I laid up there and put the smack down <laughs> that night, you know? The smack so, down. Yeah. Well, why I you, don't think I'm what? old enough for this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the next morning, she supposed to go to work, but she knocking on the window at 9 o'clock. I say, well, ain't you supposed to be to work? You know, she said, nah, I have to come back, you know, so... I had to make sure it was mama. right. Oh! Oh, yeah. see, look, you, you, you see what the smackdown will do for you? Yeah! Yeah. Not once! Uh, yeah, so we talked and talked, got together, then I moved in with her. This is the woman I've been looking for all my life, for real. All right! Miss I've never had my, my family members tell me that I look happier than I've ever been. Yeah, you had a All man right. drive through three states to get to you. You <laughs> should have. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> drive through three states and do the smackdown. So yeah. you know she's supposed to be smiling. Well, now we're too old to wait. You know? <laughs> there you go. So, so what was it like when you first met? When you first got together? I mean, what was it about him that you liked? What was it like in the beginning? I liked his person, the way he dressed. I mean, you know, I like to dress. He's I love snappy. to dress. I got to tell this story. Okay. Okay. When we first met and we was going shopping and, you know, he likes to ride around in those little cart things. Okay. And he got ready to get in that cart. I said, not with me, you're not. <laughs> I said, you walking. And he's been walking ever since. All right. So uh -huh. she's like, she's making you a better man. Mm -hmm. Oh, she did. She meant better man, but I'm still saying it's something going on around that house. <laughs> Right. Because you had this beautiful beginning, this beautiful start to a beautiful relationship, but then you start to see something, something's going on. What are these warning signs? What, what did you see? Okay, uh, the first warning sign is I'm on her turf. You're on her turf? Yeah. She put on a ringtone, my man calling, my man calling. So I'm looking at your man calling, you know, that you, you, you had music. Well, I know it's me, then when we got married, she said, my husband calling, my husband calling. So one day I call, 
She ran into the farm. I said, what you doing out of breath? Oh, I just uh, cleaning the bathroom. Your Honor, our bathroom from here to there in the front room, unless she had to jump over the sofa and the table and run around to be out of breath. So you think if she got this specific ringtone just in case? When I call, she knows you got to answer that phone. But if it's just a regular ringtone, she ain't got to worry about it. But if my man call it, I got to answer this phone before he thinks something or he knows something. But you know, in some worlds, I'm just putting it out there. Right. In some worlds, that's kind of showing that this 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 particular number is special to me. Like I, each of my sons had their own ringtone. Right. Mr. Color has his own ringtone. My best friend has her ringtone. Right. That way, I know who's calling, and I'm like, this is a call I want to take. Okay, then tell her to put. Will you smell what the rock is cooking? The smackdown, the end of the This man sets up booby traps in the house. Booby traps? Booby traps, yes. Okay, tell me about this. Okay. <laughs> the kitchen, at night, he puts, like, the um, dish tray in front with the chopping board in front of the door and two knives in the door. Let me okay. show you. Let me show you. Okay, here's the chopping board. Uh-huh. This is the dish tray. Uh-huh. There are the knives. And so... And, there, and that's the door to your house? That's the door. That's the French door leading to the basement. Door to go to my game. It goes room. to the basement and it goes to the outside sun porch. What? Okay. I, so if somebody opens the door, what happens? All of this racket would happen. All of this yeah. racket, the knives would fall off, the dishes I can would hear. fall and break, the, all of that. It's just... And he does this how often? Every night. Right. But she didn't Every tell you why. Every night. Okay, tell me why, because I'm trying to understand. She didn't tell you why. When we got together and I moved in there with her about three, three nights, you know, we got alarm on the house. Uh-huh. The back door alarm go off. Um, she's still laying in bed. I'm jumping up. Now I'm in a fresh house. Ain't no ghosts around here. You somebody got a key to come in this door. Because I checked that door before we went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so you thinking another man's coming for the SmackDown? Yep. Oh. Yeah, but dumb days over with. The only yeah. SmackDown is your SmackDown. Yeah, it's supposed to be, but we're gonna find yeah. out today. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, hey, so like... what do you so what do you think about all this? You go in there and you see all this right. set up. I, I'm just like, whatever. I told him, whatever you want to do, fine. He's got to have it the front door. When we leave the house, the front door, he takes a little piece of paper yeah. and sticks it up in the front door to sh and he shuts the door. And so when we go in the house and I open the door, that little piece of paper will fall. Mm -hmm. That way he knows nobody's been in the house. You putting all his secrets out here yeah. today. Yeah. I, learned, <laughs> I learned that off of James Bond. I'm supposed to you can do what you want to do. I'm going to put the paper up there. Uh, so, so Miss yeah. Edie, you are that suspicious of your wife that she's cheating with somebody that you're going through all these steps just to make sure nobody's coming in and out of your house. Your Honor, I got proof. How she cheating with putting cellular phones in a wig and everything else. So I'm hearing some go, mm. I, I, I'm looking, mm. So I think that she had it in her head, but a few minutes she jumps up. I said, where you gone? Boy, that T-shirt running me to the bathroom. Uh, yeah, whatever. I'm right. going to reclaim my wig. So, wait a minute, That's Miss Edie. Thinking. Hold on, hold on. Miss Edie, did you ever see her pull a phone out of her wig? She too slick for that? Yes or no? No. Yes. But I brought somebody here today to show you better than I could tell you. So you got a live exhibit? Yes, I do, y'all. OK. <laughs> Ron, can you bring in the live exhibit? Yes, y'all. Uh, oh, my God. Yes, I do. How are you? All right, what we got okay. here? Now, you see them wigs? One of them I call Back to Future. <laughs> <laughs> so when I know she put that on, she up to no good. I'm so reclaiming that's back my wig. I'm getting ready to reclaim So wig. I'm about to show y'all what you could do with a wig. Now, this is a telephone into a wig. Right. Okay. Right. So if she said, well, hey, I'm going outside somewhere, right? Can you please pull a set of keys out your wig? Oh. I'm just showing you what you could do with a wig. 
Yeah, and I told her about it. Oh, my Lord. Right. And she probably probably got money in there. But she always crying broke. (laughs) Miss Edie. Hey. Lord have mercy. (laughs) I just want to reclaim my wig. That's all I want to do. So are you wearing your wig? I haven't worn a wig since we got married. I wore a wig on our wedding, for our wedding. And I haven't put one on since. Look at my wig. Think of my face. And so you want to reclaim your wig? Yes, wigs. I do. All right. So you're trying to get your wigs back. That's not happening. Mm-mm. Because he believes you hiding everything but the kitchen under your wig. Right. All right, ma'am, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> you know... All right, we, not ha- we haven't had a live demonstration like that, Mr. Color. Yeah, that's some uh, Pam Griff, Foxy Brown stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Pull stuff out of your wig. Well, yeah. he actually believes the James Bond. You know how James Bond turns his shoe into a knife and he takes uh-huh. off his coat and it's a bomb? I mean, he's thinking that's what she's doing. Okay. Now, I'm gonna make sure somebody come in that house while I'm not there, I'm gonna find out. Well, Mr. Eden, let me ask you this. Do you have any other reason to believe that she's cheating? Yes, uh, so one day we went somewhere and I said, well, you go head on to the car and I have uh, a deck window that I got vines that I could see out, but you can't see in. Can I show you? Yes. yes. Step to the monitor and show us, please. All right. So, she's walk out the front, and she's over here by the flower bed, right? So, she, there's a certain flower there that's a white flower that I seen her push the... Uh, Stuff I look like put a key there, like right here. So that's a close up of what we were looking at before. Right. And you stood right. there and watched her do this. Yes, I'm I'm looking, I'm looking out the window. Hey, Adam, so... The average person would have come out and said, What are you doing? No, because I wanted to I wanted to see, I wanted to see who getting this key. So you think she's leaving the key there for another man? Yeah. To do the smack down. Yeah, I, I guess so. I guess my smack ain't down no more. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to hold on. I want to go back to this planner. Do you know what he's talking about when you were out there in the flower bed? I'm always out there pulling weeds because I try to keep the flower bed clean. And if I see a weed sticking out, I just go pull it. So that you There's think no that's what you were doing? I know that's, what, that's did, the only thing I could be doing. Did you put a key out there? No. You, you're not putting a key out there no. for that special someone? No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is the only special someone I know. <laughs> and I love uh, him. I, I, love my, I love my wife. I really truly do love her, but I just got to find out. I just got to know. All right, Mr. Cullen, I think we got enough. It's all <laughs> circumstantial. But here's what we got. We got he believes his wife is hiding a secret phone, keys, money under her wig. Miss Millie, the wig, Miss Millie. <laughs> He said, back to the future. Back to the future. Mm-hmm. He's, she's, he believes she's leaving keys in the planner out by the in, the, in the middle of the yard. At this time, the court will call a certified polygraph examiner, Kendall Schell, to determine, is she cheating? Um, <laughs> Good day, Mr. Shaw. How are you? Good day, Your Honor. Fine, sir. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Would you state your credentials, please, for the court? I was privileged to work for the FBI in Washington, D.C. for almost 30 years. I worked uh, foreign counterintelligence, white-collar crime. I advanced through polygraph school until I became chief of the entire FBI's polygraph program. I retired, set up my own practice in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. You conducted a polygraph examination on Miss Edie, is that correct? I did, Your Honor. You asked Miss Edie, have you been hiding keys in the planter box to cheat with other men? What was her response to that question? She said no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that she was being truthful, Your Honor. It's just weeds, Mr. Edie. It's just weeds. <laughs> Ain't no keys involved. All right. All right. You asked Mrs. Edie, since you've been in a relationship with Mr. Edie, have you had sexual intercourse with any other man? What was her response? She said no. 
What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that she was being truthful. Well, I owe you here. Come here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I love you. Mm, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> You all are a lively, vibrant couple. I like that. I like to see that. It gives us Thank hope you. for our golden years. Yeah, she the only one. I, that's the only person I love. I finally met the woman I love in 50 some years. And this is my rock. You no, know, God brought us my together. Rock. All right, well, Miss Edie, hold up your right hand, turn to Miss Edie, <laughs> say, I, I, Fred Edie, Fred Edie, promise to stop. Promise to stop. Accusing my wife. Accusing my wife. Of cheating with other men. Cheating with other men. And. <laughs> and. I promise. I promise. That you can now. You can now. Start wearing your wigs again. <laughs> start wearing your wigs again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you all are married. You've been in your relationship 10 years. Married for three. Is that correct? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma I need to know, Ms. Dahl, why have you brought your wife here today? Because I feel that she has cheated. No matter if it's mentally, physically, emotionally, conversationally, it's all the same to me. And I just need to know the truth. Ms. Meadows, what are you here to prove today? That I'm not cheating. I have nothing to hide. I haven't been conversating or communicating with anybody else. And I think that she's just overboarding from things in the past. All right, so how do you feel when you find out your wife thinks you're cheating? It irritates me. I'm tired of being accused of everything. If I go to the store, uh, if I'm on social media, if I like a pe uh, somebody else post, it's a problem. Um, everything, is, I'm just getting what tired of What kind of, of post are you liking that? All right, you tell me. Miss Doll, what kind of My post? My friends post. She likes friends posts that are strippers. But she but, likes and she, she likes she posts does of as women well. that she are does half as well. naked. She does as well. She likes posts of. We like the same posts, so it's no different. It's so a, that's one thing y'all got in common. Yeah. It's a different. We, we like the same no. pictures though. So how did you get together? A friend. Right with my cousin. And then she wanted to talk to me. <laughs> All right, tell me about that. Yeah. Okay. I crossed over her because she was by my handbag in my friend's car. Okay. And so I simply asked my friend, why do you have this person by my handbag that I don't know? And when I got outside of the car, I just flirting. looked and I said, do, you, do I know you from somewhere is exactly what I said. Flirting. Were you After flirting? That, yes, no. that's flirting. So you're like, what you doing here? Because see, that's how, that's part of how me and Mr. Cutler got together. I was like, why are you here? You're not even supposed to be here. Exactly. Yeah, she, and then look at here. No, she, look she at wanted me there. there. No, I exactly. 35 years she later, this there. is what it looks like. Yeah. No, that's not it. I judged yeah. her by her character, and I didn't want her by my handbag because I didn't know what type of person she was. Come on, okay. I go Ms. for Meadows, that. Tell me from your viewpoint what yeah. this looked like. Okay, I was with such such like she said. We pulled up. I think it was all a setup for her friend to show her who I was. So when we pulled up, she reached over me and kind of hiked hiked her butt in the air. <laughs> knowing, knowing I'm gonna look, I didn't say anything. She got a purse and then she asked me a couple questions. And she was like, uh, do I know you from somewhere? And I was like, no. And then, like, I wasn't really just giving her no play, but I knew that she would buy into that. Wait a minute, I was gonna say, that's I a strong player move. She looked, move. She that's looked, a strong real, she looked real nice to me. Like, okay, I didn't she's want her beautiful. To know that, though. She's very beautiful. I didn't want her to know that, though, because I didn't want her to get the big head. Right, so right. I was like, you know. I was <laughs> I like I'm just, gonna, I was like, I'm just gonna wait a little bit, She'll, you know, but at the time, I was in a relationship. Okay. So I was like, you know, I can't just, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you were in a relationship at the time. Yes, How did you get out of that relationship and move on to this relationship? Because I played like I was her girlfriend's friend. Yep, and I started fooling with her. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Wait a minute, who said I love you first? She did. Oh. Uh, tell me what that looked like. I Gosh, fell in like... love. <laughs> <laughs> you still in love, the way uh, yeah, you said that. I'm uh, still in love with her, yeah. Right. I love her. I love her to death. Look, look. Oh, wait, look, uh, look. Uh -huh, look. She's uh -huh. blushing! She know I love her. She know I, I love her to death. I mean, clearly, you all are in love. Yes, ma'am. Why are we here today? I'm tired of being accused of if I go out of town and she's not with me, or if she's not with me, period, when I'm gone somewhere, she's thinking I'm doing something. If I'm on my phone, when I'm asleep, she's checking true. my phone. Not true. She had a locator on my phone. Not true. She was checking the phone bill. Not true. 
She check all, she got passwords to all my social media. I do not check her Can phone. Can I step in for a minute? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Okay. Miss Dahl, tell me. So I had a gut feeling that something was wrong because every day that I was at work, I wasn't talking to her as much. So I checked my phone bill. It was hours of conversation only while I was at work from my hours of 8.30 to 6 were the only time the conversations were going on in the text messaging. The friend was never introduced to me, so I don't know what they were talking about. So why do you think that was inappropriate? Because this is the only friend that she would never talk to around me. All the rest no, of them she would. You've no. ever talked to around me? No, I didn't, but okay, I, didn't feel, I didn't feel like she would be in so acceptance finish, of me talking please? to somebody that she doesn't know around. When she told me she okay. had a problem with it, I cut it short. I cut it off. So, okay. Ms. Dahl, okay. you're me, not buying this. Let, no, I'm not, because let me tell you how this happened. We went on a vacation with friends. This same girl that I wasn't introduced to worked there. The girl waited till I left from the table to come speak to her. No, she didn't. Yes, she did. She she thought I was with my crazy ex, so she, so she didn't want to walk over so, there. So she spoke to you while I was at the table. No, look, it was a couple of it was a couple of other ladies over there that was with us. We was in a group. One of them looked at like my ex, and she knew that she was crazy. Nobody period. could ever look like her. She, oh. It was an ugly I'm person sorry. there, and she was she didn't want to walk over there, so she sent somebody over. And she was like, tell her to come in. I was like, just tell her to come over here. You know, I got a new girlfriend or whatever. And I told her, I said, well, come back and meet her. She had caught an attitude, and she didn't want to... You know, I don't want no chaotic situation going on. She could have introduced us at that time when Ms. I came Dahl, back to the table. Ms. Dahl, you, you think been you were, there was some other kind of service going on? I just think that nah. it was sneaky, because when I came back to the table, that gave her enough time to introduce us. Since I wasn't her ex-girlfriend, I was the new girl. And when I tried to, she had an attitude. She had an attitude no, when I tried to. No, she never tried to introduce us. So tell me specifically, what bothered you about this particular incident? Because after that incident, the girl was calling on holidays. She was calling at late at night texting. But the texts nah. were deleted out of her phone, and the phone calls were, too. Nah. What other reason do you have to believe that there's something more going on with this friend? Because we were out on Valentine's Day, and the friend called again after I told her to stop talking to her. I told her to answer the phone, and she said, you tell me not to talk to her anymore. I said, but I'm right. sitting here, so you have the right to answer if you have nothing to hide. We were on a vacation at one point, and we had a friend with us at the time. And we were in a room, left a club. I told her that I was ready to go to our room. She didn't want to leave the room. She wanted to stay up and entertain the other person, I guess. She also told me, let's all lay down and let her get in the middle while we lay down and have drinks. <laughs> OK. So... So, so, so what did what? you say to that? I said no, <laughs> and I put her on the other end. All no. right, Miss Meadows. That's not. Did what that happened. happen? All right, tell no, us that, what happened. No, that, no, no, no. Did hold something hold close to that happen? Yeah. Okay, that happened. tell me what okay, that was. That was sad. Okay, I, I thank think you. that was sad. But look, I was. Everybody was intoxicated, and it was something that she started and initially engaged in. No. As in, yes, what it was. started was when I walked on okay, the elevator. Okay, Miss Meadows. What was trying? What? 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 That's what started. So they left out of the room together for what reason? No, I, I left know. first. And something told me to leave out the room as well. So when I walked around to the elevator, she was kissing the girl. On, well, the girl was kissing her. On. Okay, Miss Meadows. The same did, time she was did, she, did this friend kiss you? Yes. Okay. She's but she she it, it was because the altercation had took place between me and her, and she was just like, <laughs> oh, I feel bad for you, and, and it was like, a, I'm like, I feel bad, and it was like, I'm and I was in shock. When it happened, well, she came around the corner, and I was in shock she did it. I was like, I mean... Okay, let me ask like you, Miss Meadows, were you trying to get, you know, I'm not trying to be, no, yeah, I am. Well, she... Uh, I, yeah, you are. Here, here, you here's are. a question. Were you trying to get something going between no. you and the friend and I, your wife? I think that she was trying Because that's grown folk to, business, I ain't trying to judge you. I think that she was trying to get something going. For one... Yeah. You can look at her and tell she looks like a man. I like studs. I don't want a film. So definitely, I wasn't trying to get anything going with a girl. Okay. Well, I actually, and she I, knows that just as clearly it, it, it as I'm saying. It couldn't. It couldn't have been for her. She could have been doing it for me. You see what I'm saying? So I can't. She knows. So that it, she so, knows what happened. She knows what happened. Who touched you who first? You know that so, one thing. If so we're gonna have you know a threesome, who touched we would first. talk about it. So don't even go there with me. So Miss Meadows, were you down for it? I'm learning from the best. Whatever, man. I'll learn from the best. Uh, he's so, always talking about me being nosy. No. So, I mean, were you down for it? No. Yeah, yeah she was. Okay, Miss Meadows, come on now. Come on. Two come beautiful on. women. Come on, man. I can tell you why. You're here in no, court. I can tell I'm you why. I'm going to say no to that question because she... I, because I asked question. her... That's a trick question. What she it's not a said, trick question. Be, she <laughs> said that she would be willing to have sex with her if she was willing to do it. 
Did you say that? Yes, sir. I said it. Okay, right. so because you said you would be willing if the friend was willing, your wife now believes that you have done something. But she only feels like that because of the way that she got me. That's the only reason why I yeah, feel like because that. I'm tired of being yeah, accused. Right. Okay, so I feel we... like that's why she's feeling like this, actually. You feel that the jealousy and accusations are based on the fact that she took you from your she prior relationship. She did what I did to my ex, yes, ma'am. And that's so she feel feels like, like that might happen to her. That's yes, your and belief. and it won't. All right, now, on like this that. vacation, do you believe that your wife actually had sex with this friend? I think it was her intentions. All right, do you have any other reasons to believe that your wife has cheated? Oh, yeah, she deletes text messages off of social media. And so you believe that she's deleting information about relationships? Oh, yeah, because the same girl that the incident happened in Dallas, that was one of her Snapchat friends as well, and they sent a video to each other. All right, what was in the video? Oh, it was her in the club, I guess, dancing, showing her some kind of video, and the girl wrote back and said, why don't you just take your glasses off? So I guess she didn't see into her That eyes. is not well, how Snapchat... I mean, that well, is not how that works. That people is not send, how work. People send videos like that of themselves no, in a no, club and you, all the time. Why was that? You to certain people. Hold on, no, no, no. I didn't, send, I didn't send no video to nobody, first of all. This is exactly what happened. You know how you post a video on, uh, the, you know, the site... If somebody uh, writes something under the video, it's gonna come to your inbox showing that they just writing a comment under your video. I didn't send no video to anybody. And you said the video that was posted was... Did you say immodest? Oh, I said it was her dancing to have a good time by herself. It wasn't, it wasn't posted on Snapchat because I have her Snapchat page and I didn't even see it. Okay, no, all right. So we've got this situation where we've got this friend involved and there are a number of instances with this friend that have concerned you, Ms. Dahl, about whether Ms. Meadows is cheating on you. Yes, sir. And Ms. Meadows, you said you have not cheated with this friend and you have not been unfaithful to your wife. Is that Period. right? Period. All right. Uh, to get to the bottom of this, the court has ordered a lie detector test right. on Ms. Meadows. And we have the results. All right. At this time, the court would like to call licensed private investigator Todd Redding. Uh, Ron, would you please show Mr. Redding into the courtroom? Yes, Sean. Hey. How are you, How Mr. Are Redding? You? Fine, thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Mr. Redding, you use a lot of techniques to catch people cheating and things like that. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. Okay. What are some of the techniques that you use? Uh, we use uh, GPS vehicle tracking, DNA. Uh, the majority we use is surveillance. On this particular case, uh, we did a polygraph examination. All right. And you have people who work for you who uh, administer polygraph examinations. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, today I'm here to uh, disclose to the court the results of the polygraph exam. All right. Ms. Meadows was asked, did you have sexual intercourse with another woman while on your trip to Dallas last year. What was her response to that question? Her response, Your Honor, was no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector examination determined that she was being truthful. <laughs> Ms. Dahl, does that allow you to breathe a sigh of relief? It's all right. It's no. all right? It does. All right. Okay. Let's go to the next question. Ms. Meadows was asked, did you have sexual contact with another woman while on your trip to Dallas last year? What was her response? Her response again was no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector examination and the polygraph examiner determined that she was being truthful. All right. All right. So, so the first question said no sexual intercourse. Second question, no sexual contact. Are you breathing a sigh of relief now? I'm okay. You're okay. We have one more question. All right. Ms. Meadows was asked, since being married to your wife, that's Ms. Dahl, have you had sexual intercourse with another woman? Your Honor, her response was again, no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector exam determined that she is being truthful. Oh. Ms. Dahl, you got a good one. 
Miss Meadows is almost in tears. I'm, I'm looking at her eyes tearing up. Because she loves you. It, I love her too, but... There yeah. shouldn't be a but after that. It's a you should have to love her, her love another person and did that person the same way to be with me. Okay, but here's the thing. She did that to be with you. I don't know how much more you she can get. Yeah. You said, I mean, how you all got together is how you got together. But you can't let that define your entire relationship. That is in the past, that you all are together now, present. That you want to be together, future. Make it happen. Okay. Miss Meadows. Miss Meadows. I'm happy for you. I'm not. <laughs> Can you share fun. with Miss Doll how you're feeling? She gonna keep on doing this. If she keep on accusing me, I'm gone. I'm tired of all. I'm tired of all it. She's actually running me off, for real, for real. I'm sorry that she thinks I'm gonna run her off, but losing her is like losing a part of me. All right. Y'all is it me. really? Yes, sir. Is it All really? Right. You don't want to lose her? No, sir, because she's my completion and she's the better part of me. Miss Doll, <sighs> you came to find out is she cheating? She is not. You have got to let go of the past. And you're gonna have to let go of the past, too, of her being suspicious if this is going to be successful.